Today's guest is Christian Thibodeau. This is the second time back on the show. I asked Christian if he would come on, um, shortly before I asked him, it was kind of when the whole thing, if you guys heard about the liver King, you know, lying about using anabolic steroids and getting exposed for that. Um, at the same time that that happened, I up leading into that time and during, and after I just started getting a lot of questions from people on social media about anabolic steroids, like what actually happens? What if I want to get off? Like, how do I get off? What resources are out there? Like, where is the good information? Where is it? And I was like, I'm going to ask Christian because what I always appreciate about Christian, and I'll say this when the episode starts, is that he is extremely honest and he's also extremely knowledgeable. And that is what we need in, in terms of this conversation. So we're getting all into anabolic steroids today. Um, what you should know if someone, you know, is considering or already using anabolic steroids, send them this episode so they can get educated by somebody who really knows what they're talking about. Um, little background information on Christian He's very well known as a writer for teen nation. Um, pretty, pretty well known in the strength coaching community. Um, we had him on before talking about his neurotyping system, which is a certification that I have through him that I love and is a huge part of my coaching has honestly been one of my favorite things I've done in the training industry. Um, and he's been involved in the business of training for over the last 20 years. He's worked with athletes from 28 different sports. He has been around the block. He's an amazing speaker. So you're going to be in for a treat. He's always so fun to listen to. So let's go ahead and get right in. Here is Christian Thibodeau. All right, Christian, thank you for coming back on. Uh, you know, in, in the years that we would have calls, you know, talking about neurotyping and all these things, you would sometimes go off on your tangents. Like you were the most, I love your tangents, never stop going off on tangents, yeah. but you would go off on some tangents about anabolic steroids. And I loved how honest, I, I'd say that's one of the things that I really appreciate about you the most is you're just really honest. It's like, this is just how it is, you know, with kind of this unbiased look. And so I thought let's get into steroids today because, you know, the liver King, that whole thing just happened and everybody's kind of wondering. And I, even as a mom of teenagers, there's like the teenagers are like joking about being on trend and like all of it, the, they're getting it from social media and then, yeah. So let's, first of all, can we start with like what the different ones are and what people need to know about like what they do to your physiology and psychology. If you're into that, I have some thoughts on that as well. Well, well, first, I mean, you do have psychological and neurological impact. And, and in fact, I could even include like different behavioral effect from simply changing your hormonal profile. So really you have three factors, three ways anabolic steroids can impact uh, your behavior. Okay, you can have uh, a change in your psychology I mean, just the fact that, for example, you might uh, feel stronger, you might feel more dominant, uh, you might more feel more assertive, stuff like that. So it, 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 you can take more room. It can actually be positive in some cases or negative in some other cases. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you're going to have the neurological impact, which means that steroids, and that's a, a part that is not well understood, uh, mm -hmm. actually have an impact on the various neurotransmitter system. And it's even, even more complex than that because different steroids will have different impact on all of these neurotransmitter systems. Uh, mm -hmm. Some will enhance several different uh, psychological characteristics and some others will, will work on other angles. And, mm -hmm. and then you have the behavioral changes from uh, changing what is a normal hormonal profile. When yeah. you create an imbalance in testosterone, estrogen, DHT, progesterone, then all kind of weird stuff can happen. And it's extremely hard to predict what will happen. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think that one of my, the, the, the one aspect I'm probably the most, I want to say confident in discussing would be like the, like the impact on the neurotransmitter system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, because first of all, it, 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 and that's, I want to say steroids will have a, an impact on your behavior, both when you are on and when you stop taking them. And some will actually suffer negative changes when they're on, and some will have positive changes or, or mm -hmm. less negative changes. And some will have a very hard fall once they stop. Okay? Yeah. Uh, especially with some product that will actually have an impact on their dopamine and serotonin receptors at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of like ecstasy when you think about it, but at a much lower yeah. level, obviously. Okay, right, right. Always make you feel like you're on your own E, or but it targets the same neurotransmitter system. 
So right. For example, uh, both nandrolone, Dynabol will increase dopaminergic activity, will increase serotoninergic activity. So you actually feel chill, you feel cool, you feel confident. You have a, a, a form of a pleasure response. Mm -hmm. So when you stop, it's like when you're stopping nicotine, for example, you stop smoking. Right. You have severe withdrawal syndrome or symptoms, not just from the fact that you see yourself getting smaller, feeling weaker, but mm -hmm. the actual fact that you are made, you made your receptors resistant mm -hmm. to your own dopamine and serotonin because you produced a response much stronger than your brain is used to dealing with, right? So right. you have, in that sense, the same kind of withdrawal that you will have when you are stopping smoking, you're stopping ecstasy, you're stopping uh, amphetamines, for example, okay, which target the similar neurotransmitter systems. Uh, then you also have steroids that will have an impact on uh, the adrenergic system. Uh, they interact with adrenaline. Specifically, mm -hmm. they will make you more responsive to your own adrenaline. They increase the sensitivity of the beta adrenergic receptors. Now, from a visual look, for example, these steroids will make you look a lot harder, okay? So these are the strong androgen, like trend that you mentioned earlier, like allotestin, for example. These have a very strong effect on the beta adrenergic receptors. So even the small amount of adrenaline creates a very large response, which will increase muscle tone, increase strength production, but on the downside, it also makes you a lot more aggressive. So there is this myth that steroid cause roid rage. Well, in many cases, it's not a myth uh, because it simply makes you a lot more responsive to adrenaline. And right. adrenaline is the fight or flight neurotransmitter, right? So, so the, when you have a high adrenaline level, you are a lot more competitive, more aggressive. Uh, you have a short fuse. You're more intolerant. You're more you're less patient. So if you make yourself more sensitive to adrenaline, you will have these big mood swings. And speaking of mood swings, some other steroids will impact the GABA to glutamate balance. Equipoise, for example, baldenone. Will, will, the baldenone will decrease GABA and increase glutamate. And, and, and as you know from previous discussion, <laughs> well, glutamate, high glutamate levels is what is responsible for mood swings. Yeah. Or, uh, and many other elements and you take everything personally everything is a critique right. everything is, so you, that's the downside of high glutamate so several product will indeed make you more anxious will make you more aggressive or more prone to aggressiveness will give you a shorter fuse while other might actually make you feel more chill but when you stop them you will have the withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. from, from not having the dopamine and serotoninergic effect anymore so mm -hmm. you have Either like so there, there, some product will be really bad when you're on them. Some will be really bad when you stop taking them. So this, this would be from a, a, a neurotransmitter standpoint. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I was reading some research. I think this was on Nandrolone, but they were looking at like the effect, the changes in the nervous system and dopamine and serotonin systems, like still after six months, people were still yeah. having these withdrawal symptoms. Like it can go for a long time. Very strong. In fact, Nandrolone, can in fact cause long lasting changes in the nervous yeah. system. Yeah. So, so, uh, 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 so first of all, it stays in the system for 18 months, but it actually made, it can actually create, uh, create changes at the genomic level. So it, it will literally alter brain chemistry, maybe even permanently. Yeah. That's, that's what the name of the article says. So it's like long lasting or permanent changes in, in, in your, in the way your brain operates. Absolutely. Holy crap. Okay. So let's, let's get real. Let's cause you know, I, I mean, at least I know this is starting to become an issue with like teenage boys. So teenage, you got a teenage boy, teenage, teenage girls. I mean, <laughs> a, a trend, Yeah. not trend, trend, uh, with, with, with girls taking stuff like clenbuterol and Anavar. We're not even yeah. training just to look good. And, and especially now with like the big booty trend, uh, right. you do have many young teenage girls who are just popping Anavar because oh it's, a, it's a pill. Like in your brain, a pill, it's just like another supplement, right? Right. So that is actually very common, very common. Much I didn't more know that. Oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. So what do they need to know? You're a, a teenage boy or you're in your early twenties or girl. What do they need to know that they're probably not being told? 
Well, they're probably not going to listen anyway, but, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. Just in case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, personally, and I've been always open with my previous use. I mean, and in my case, it actually led to severe health issues. Uh, I did have uh, kidney issues. Uh, I, had, I had two heart. Uh, and I want to say one was a heart failure, one was a heart attack. Uh, I had sexual issues. Yeah. Uh, so it was like really bad. I've been off for a long time now because, well, because of the kidney issue and heart issue, even if I wanted to, I, I just wouldn't do it, especially with two kids yeah. and maybe a third on the way. Um, so, so that's what Nina would say. Uh, so, so strictly from a, a, a health perspective, and some, that's probably not a good argument with kids because yeah. they do feel indestructible. And yes. these side effects are more often than not like in the distant future. Okay. Right. But they are actually starting happening uh, pretty early on uh, because you will have changes in, in uh, lipid profile. You will, that will increase plaque deposit. You can have increase in blood pressure, which can be harmful for kidneys, et cetera, et cetera. And you're messing up with your hormonal system. Um, now, the thing is that if the kid would be smart and like just use a small amount and just stop you would probably be able to like get away with it because a young physiology will actually recover pretty fast. Mm -hmm. But that's not counting on the fact that nobody ever was right when they said, I'm going to introduce one cycle. Yeah. That does not happen. That, that does not happen. Okay. Because first of the, the addiction, like the yes. actual neurological addiction. Yeah. Uh, and second, because of the physical addiction, because you do get faster results. Right. And the problem is, it, I mean, if you, you stop before you, you, you altered your natural physiology for the long term, you could keep gaining muscle, okay? You would keep progressing once the body resettles. The problem is that if you don't and you stay on for too long, too high dosages, you probably permanently shut down your capacity to build muscle naturally. So now you become a slave to the drug, okay? Yeah. Because, and the reason why that, and I have a theory why that happens, okay? Um, what happens is when you are at the cellular level, okay? Uh, the, the, well, so you have the androgen receptors on which testosterone and other steroids, quote unquote, will bind and send, then send a message to the nucleus. And then you have glucocorticoid receptors, which bind with cortisol, right? Mm -hmm. Now, these two receptors use the same messenger to get their message to the nucleus, okay? So the more you overload the androgen receptors by using mm -hmm. steroids, which will give you uh, like 10, 20, 30 times the amount of natural androgen in your body, then you aug all those messengers. So cortisol cannot do its job properly, okay? And that, that, and that in itself is a problem. Wow. But it's even worse of a problem that the body will adjust by what? I'm producing cortisol and it doesn't do its job. What can I do? Well, I'll do produce more cortisol, right? As right. long as you're on cycle, well, you kind of protect it, okay? But the problem is that the body is smarter than you are. So it will, will find a second way of adapting. It will make its glucocorticoid receptors more sensitive to cortisol. Mm -hmm. So that it can actually be equivalent yeah. to the overloaded androgen receptors, right? At that right. point, that's where steroids actually stop making you gain. I mean, you're not gaining any more than someone who, who is natural. And that happens after what you're on for, let's say, 12, 15 weeks, wow. whatever. That, that's why people will up their dosages, which will right. lead to the third problem, which is now you can compensate by adding the dose, increasing the dose to overload the androgen receptors even more or even proliferate the androgen receptors, the body will adapt out by increasing glucocorticoid receptor numbers. And that will not be, you won't be able to get rid of them. So let's say that for wow. some reason, you stop taking the steroids. Well, in that, you find yourself in a situation where your glucocorticoid receptors are a lot more numerous. So now right. you over respond to cortisol, which means that it, it, it the training will be a lot more catabolic than anabolic. It becomes pretty much impossible to build muscle naturally and even keep the muscle you have. So people who lose muscle when they stop, it's mostly a cortisol response problem, not a lack of testosterone levels, okay? And the problem is that this is actually permanent. Now, the problem is the physique you built becomes essentially a rented product. 
You can only maintain it as long as you're on drugs. So you will be on drugs the rest of your life. And that's when training becomes ineffective and you are forced to stay on drugs. So the health issues will accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Okay. Wow. So just by wanting to look better and in your high school dress or high school shirt or at the club, then you enter a, 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 a wheel that just you just can't stop. I mean, there will always be a next cycle. And, so, and some people actually don't cycle at all. They just stay on, blast and cruise. And, and now you become totally dependent on a drug to maintain your physique. Uh, you talking about the cortisol is also making me think I've been really into gut health recently. And, um, there's a microbiologist named Karan Krishnan. He's microbiome labs. I was hearing him speak last weekend in Austin. And he was talking about when cortisol gets into your gut, if you don't have certain keystone strains of bacteria that you really need, you will activate your HPA axis. So for listeners, that's the, your hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which is like the stress system in your body because your body senses this stressor. And then that HPA axis, when that gets activated, you downregulate your keystone strains of bacteria because you downregulate your gut function. And then the cortisol gets in and it just is a cycle that keeps going and going, going. And I'm looking at these teenagers and what they're eating. And I'm finding it really hard to believe that that they're going to have all the keystone strains of bacteria that they need. So not only what you're talking about, but being dependent on drugs for your physique, but think in terms of your HPA access is connected to your testes, your ovaries, your liver, your gut, your all, all of the major organs. And yeah. And so now you're a sitting duck also for all sorts of uh, suboptimal health states. I'll put it that way, you know, hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, uh, disease even, you know? So it's like when, when we're messing with cortisol, I remember one time I had a young bodybuilder say to me, can't we just like, is there a way to just make cortisol stop coming, happening in your body? And I was just like, oh my gosh, no, well, there like- is, there <laughs> is, but if you I mean, literally it will, because back then in like, in like the eighties in bodybuilding, they used a drug called a citadrine. <laughs> which would completely block cortisol production. Oh my gosh. And literally, you could not train when you were taking it. I mean, you, yeah. would, you, you would flush all the water because there would be like literally zero water retention, but <laughs> it was impossible to train. I mean, you hurt all the time. Okay. But you know, oh. one thing that's also bad is that it, when they start early, they actually never learn what productive training really is. Because, and I did a, an Instagram yeah. video on that topic uh, this morning, well, recently. Uh, that they are, even though the same basic principles apply when it comes to training naturally or enhanced, uh, you do have to modulate stressors quite differently. Mm. So like doing a training program that will be very effective for someone who's enhanced will likely not work for someone who's natural. It might actually cause muscle loss by causing too much muscle trauma. Makes so you never, you, you never learn to eat either. Because yeah. especially, especially if they combine like those girls who want to have a a big booty combined plan, maybe even T3 and Anavar, and you can eat burgers and you're still going to get lean. Well, they never learn how to properly modulate their diet. Right. So even if we're not considering health, which would be stupid to not consider health, uh, from just learning to become good in the gym and in the kitchen table, uh, that just will prevent you from being optimal. Let's, let's hit on the teenagers again. Cause I get this question from time to time. So let's say we've got some young kid. He's, I don't know, 16, 17, he's trying to get bigger for some sport or whatever. And he's considering, and he's listening to this and he's like, maybe I shouldn't do it. What, what is your best counsel for that kid or that girl that wants the big booty or anyway, you know, what is your best counsel in terms of nutrition training supplementation for them to be able to get there without well, this? The first thing I would say is that in most sports, especially in the sports we play in North America competitively, like, like team sports and mm-hmm. uh, you will, uh, you will be short a yard a lot more often than you short a pound. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, many kids, and I made that mistake when I was younger. Many kids make the mistake of looking at, for example, let's say I'm a high school football player, right? Mm -hmm. I'm maybe a junior. I'm looking at the rosters uh, of college football programs. I'm a linebacker. I'm, let's say, 190 pounds. And I'm looking at college rosters. These guys are like 220, 225, Mm -hmm. maybe 215, 220. So I I need to be 220. So you will force feed yourself to gain more size, more size, more size. Then you end up being freaking slow. And in most sport, speed 
is a zillion time more important than sight. A lot yeah. more, a lot more. And, and people focus so much on the numeral that it, I want to be the bigger <laughs> dude, just be the fastest. Okay. Mm. Uh, second, if you are, let's say, at 16, 17, and you need to be bigger just to make the team, and you're considering steroids at 17 to make the team, dude, you're not going to have a career. So don't waste it. Because if you need steroids at 17 to make the team, you don't have what it takes. <laughs> and I know it sucks to hear, okay? <laughs> but if at 17, you need steroids to compete with the highly, more highly skilled athletes, then you don't have what it takes to be at, uh, dominant at the next level, mm. even less professional athlete, okay? So, so you will, you're asking to take a product to what play for one year because after that you won't play because in college you won't make the cut, okay? Now, if you really do need some weight, then, I mean, nutrition is, is to me, okay, you can't speed up the process. That's a bad thing, right? Uh, I mean, if you are not enhanced and not genetically gifted as a, as a dude, as a young kid, because of puberty, you can gain a bit faster, but you might be able to gain, let's say in your first year, probably 15 pounds. And that would be a very, very mm -hmm. good year because you can't, you can't train hard all year because of football or, or mm -hmm. hockey or baseball or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that 15 pounds, that doesn't sound much because you have supplement ads claiming you can gain 30 pounds in six weeks. You can have, uh, but, okay, but, but that's the rate that's possible. Okay? Yeah. So the two mistakes to make, in my opinion, when working with athletes, okay, and, and linemen in football might be the exception is gaining fat in the hope of building more muscle, okay? Certainly you do need more calories. You, be, you need to be in a surplus to be able to grow muscle at the optimal rate, but you cannot force your body to gain faster than its physiological limit, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so trying to gain 20, 30 pounds right now will just make you fatter and slow. Yeah. I personally don't accept any weight gain that would make the athlete slower. And mm -hmm. I would say just focus on, I mean, I, I had this athlete. He was, um, well, it's a bit older than 17. He was not 19. 19 he was in a, a college football player uh, in Canada. So the, the Canadian football game is a bit different than in the U.S. We only have three downs. There's 12 players and the field is bigger. So it's much more mm -hmm. pass oriented. Yeah. So my guy was a linebacker. He was 195 or 205. Two or five, and he wasn't like extremely fast, but he had very good uh, game speed because he was reading the play pretty well. But he was not like fast in the in the, the speed sense. Now they they changed the coaching staff, and the new coaching staff was from the U.S. Different game, so they told him if you want to be a starter, you need to gain twenty pounds over the summer. And then I told him, well, Manas, you, you're not fast, so if you build up to two twenty five, you'll be freaking slow. You will lose your job anyway. Yeah, so what can I do? Well, here's what you're going to do. We're going to just train to make you stronger and faster. You're going to beat all the other players at the physical test, okay? Mm -hmm. And when they, weigh, when they weight you, put five-pound plates in your pockets. And I, <laughs> that was a joke. I mean, joking, okay? So I was actually coaching high, high school football at that time, and I was on the field several months later, and he called me up, and he's laughing on the phone. He said, Christian, it worked. I said, what worked? <laughs> Well, I put 15 pounds in my pockets and I got the starting job. Oh my but, gosh. But, but the point is that he was actually the strongest squatter and the strongest on a power clean. Even yeah. so, he was a linebacker, he was even stronger than lineman. And he was actually faster. He was decently fast. And then he had a great season. So again, speed kills in sport. I mean, if you want to build muscle, just focus on getting strong on a big basic lift. Focus on targeting your weaknesses uh, and don't get fat in the process. Don't get fat in the process. People think that just bulking, like adding tons and tons of calories will, will speed up the process. It won't. Like personally, when I, I, I want to like maximize more lean mass without getting too much fat, I, I will use a, a low carbs diet for most of the day, except for the workout period where mm -hmm. I will have a, a spike in the uh, in carbs before and after, both to have an increased mTOR response to the mm -hmm. training session, which will give you more gains, uh, and afterwards to replenish muscle glycogen. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but then I want a surplus and I want mostly fats and protein except for the intro workout period. So you've been, you know, obviously you've had a lot of, um, athletic performance type things, and you've also like achieved a physique that I think, you know, a lot of young guys or old guys or any guys, they, they're like, I want to look that way. Right. So you come from the perform sports performance side. Can you speak on your experience with, cause a lot of these kids, like I was at my son's football banquet and I heard over we're getting food and I hear these boys be like, Oh yeah, I'm bulking right now. And there's a lot of pressure. I would say for teenage boys, all the way up to men, you know, adult, older men of like, you should look like this. This will make you more, this will make you a man. This will make you more attractive, you know? And so some of these guys, I really think are getting on steroids just so they can look a certain way. Do you have any words of wisdom for those guys? Uh, Speaking from experience. Okay. Because I've been pretty much everything. Yeah. I've been, been the been the like the, the, the fat boy. I've been the strong and fat guy. I've been the the, the, the lean shredded guy. I've been the, the huge muscular and shredded guy. Yeah. And, and I would say that when I got big and shredded, I only got more attention from guys. <laughs> and, and weirdly enough, like steroids did not buy me a personality. In fact, it, it actually made me a lot less appealing. Yeah. And most people are more, uh, uh, and that sounds so bad because we do have this image of that the better physically I look, the more attractive I am. And that's, I guess, true in some extent, if you reach a certain look, but it, too much is not better. Okay. Yeah. And I think that uh, when, for most women, okay, mm-hmm. most women tend to like either like the lean athletic look or like the, the, the strong farmer type, okay? <laughs> so so like, the, like, the, like the big teddy bear guy. So yeah. both of these extremes are, do not require steroids, okay? Right. Uh, in fact, and steroids, if you take steroids, then, then there's only two ways it could go, okay? Because they will ask you about it. Are you taking steroids? I mean, the girl who's going out with you at one point either will go through your things or just ask, well, are you taking steroids? You can either be honest and say yes, and then she might actually, okay, you look like that because you're on drug and you kind of kind of lose its specialness, right? Uh, and then you can lie, then you're building a relationship built on the lie. So again, you are doomed to stay on drugs until mm-hmm. you don't want to be with that person anymore because you cannot all of a sudden lose 30 pounds of muscle because that would be weird. Okay. Well, and I would say from my, you know, female perspective, I've dated guys who have been on steroids. I have, and I've dated guys. Now I honestly like won't to be honest, just because I kind of learned my lessons. And what you were saying on that is like, my thoughts go to two things. One is like, what's going on inside of you that you feel like you need to drug yourself to earn your value. Mm-hmm. Like that is, I'm just being real. Sorry if that offends anybody. It's it, that that's where my mind goes. Um, the second thing is like women are attracted to good men, good men who treat them well. And that's where I kind of wanted to, I don't know if you have thoughts on this, but I have watched because bodybuilding is pretty big here in Utah where I live. And it's like, I, I literally just like, it looks, this is how it appears from the outside. You get a, like a, you know, a kind of good guy, a good guy. He's kind of innocent. He like just really, maybe he's got some wounded stories with his body or who knows, he wants to compete and he's just, you know, get, and I literally just kind of observe them turn into these. I have no better word for it. I'm sorry, but like D bags, like they're like their sex drive is through the roof. They're dishonest. They're sneaky. I'm not saying everybody on steroids is like that, but I know people who know, know what I'm freaking talking about. It's kind of like this, um, overly sexual, secretive kind of by, can you speak to that? Like any of you, any well, thoughts you have on that? Just from a, like a, a both hormonal and neurotransmitter perspective. Okay. Obviously, uh, higher testosterone and estrogen levels, because you need both to have like mm-hmm. that high sex drive, uh, will dramatically increase sex drive. And so in that sense, you can become like that horny teenager who gets excited just looking at a girl walking by. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's a fact. Uh, ironically, there are uh, some other drugs or some drug protocols or uh, some amount of drug or length of cycle that can actually have the opposite effect. It can mm. actually kill your sex drive. For huh. example, if you create too much of an imbalance. 
So for example, if you, someone would, uh, I want to minimize side effects, so I'm taking an anti-aromatase, anti-estrogen, now your estrogen is super low, testosterone is high, you actually kill your sex drive. Uh, some will take DHC inhibitors, which also kill your sex drive. You think you're mm -hmm. preventing side effect from steroids, but you're actually making things worse. Mm -hmm. Now, from a neurotransmitter perspective, obviously, by increasing that dopamine and serotonin level, you increase confidence. Yeah. So, so that makes you a lot more outgoing. You, it makes you like more willing to engage in social contact mm -hmm. combined with a higher level of sexual desire. Right. So of course, not yep. everybody will have the restraint to stop that, right? Yeah. And, and then other thing, you need to understand why some people are on steroids. Okay. And again, I'm not making a generalization. It's right. not everybody's the same. Right. But a lot of people will get into steroid because of low self-esteem issues. Yes. And their personality requires to be admired, yeah. desired. Mm -hmm. respected, loved, to feel good about themselves, right? Yeah. So, so for that person, okay, when they have, for example, a, a girl or a guy, depending on the person, a girl that, that shows them sexual interest, mm -hmm. it, 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 that's the ultimate, ultimate mark of being desired. Yeah. So it's it's extremely, extremely exciting for someone with a low self-esteem level. Yeah. So they might not, even if, even people like with, who rely on the perception of others to feel good about themselves will be more likely to cheat, okay? Yeah. Because they, not because they want the sex, but because sexual relationship tells them that person desires me, so yeah. I'm, I'm good, okay? Yeah. But, more people, most people who are like that will be able to control themselves because their neurotransmitter levels are normal and the, the hormones are level are normal. But if you increase them and they are more sensitive to attention from others, now you have a dangerous recipe. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for speaking on that. Okay. I wanted to ask about, uh, you're on steroids right now and you're like, want to get off. And I have found, I don't know about you. I don't know if you have resources. I don't have resources. People are like, who specializes in like helping people get off steroids. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I Christian, but he's too busy. Like, what would you say? And I know it's different uh, for different ones, but what would you say to that person? The, the best guy for that is Dr. Mike Militech. Militech. Yes. I will send you his, his okay. contact information. Uh, yeah. He specifically deals. He's a doctor. He's a former very high level Olympic weightlifters. Ironically, we actually train at the same place, but not at the same time. He's mm. older than I am. He's in the US, I think Connecticut or something like that. Okay. And his practice deals mostly with athletes that mm. use steroids are stopping and show signs of depression and stuff like that. So he, he, he okay. helped them get, get better. So that's really his area of expertise. He would absolutely be my go-to guy for that specific topic. Do you know if he has general resources? I mean, obviously I know everybody's going to be different, but does he have like a book or general resource for people? Do I don't, you know? I don't think so, but he's okay. very easy to contact, very easy to deal okay. with. Okay. Uh, but, but again, you have, because you have two things, well, three things really to, to, to deal with. And, and I can speak of that because I, I, I myself went through that process. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and for me, I would say that the biggest negative thing was more psychological than, than your transmitter because mm -hmm. I, I went from being like the biggest guy around with traps up to here right uh, and everybody would turn around and now I, ironically i can actually look my best how can i do my photo shoots now i'm actually dieting on for a photo shoot I, I get i can get leaner and mm -hmm. i get a more like a smaller but athletic physique mm -hmm. uh, but when i'm dressed up i i don't look that impressive and to be honest at first it was extremely hard especially when giving seminars for example because mm -hmm. i walk in there with a hoodie or stuff like that and I, and i know people think oh i thought it was bigger because you mm -hmm. can still see photo of me when i was like 230 freaking lean mm -hmm. so for me the on and now stop the difference is probably like 30 35 pounds of muscle uh, i can still be super lean I, i'm more muscular than most people mm -hmm. uh, but i'm not the big guy anymore and well, that. I think it's, it's kind of the bigger is better mentality because 
you know, you're speaking to an audience in which they might kind of also be in that energy. But when you speak on this, when you speak on the reasons why yeah. you're not showing up that way anymore, it's powerful, you know? Oh, what actually helped me is that uh, for me, and, and the, the weird thing is that I was never, at least not at first, into being big and muscular, okay? Mm-hmm. I was into getting strong. Mm-hmm. That was my motivation. I was yeah. actually my strongest before I even thought about using steroids, which mm-hmm. is ironic. Because wow. I, the ball. I started using them. Well, um, I started out as a football player, then uh, Olympic weightlifting. Okay. Uh, so I was, I was very strong. I, I didn't look good. I mean, I didn't even look like I lift, I get, but, but I was squatting 600, whatever. Um, and, and I remember I, got, I tore a bicep. So I said, well, I can't lift heavy for a while. So I'm just going to try to get lean because every, in the past, every time I would try to get lean, I would get weaker. So that freaked me out and I stopped dieting. Right. Uh, so I said, well, it doesn't matter. I can't be strong anymore. I'm just going to get freaking lean and then we'll work from there. And I got lean and I said, well, no, might as well. I tried to do a bodybuilding show and, and I got my ass kicked I mean, bad. And it was like, like a, just a, a, a local show. Yeah. And I, I, I look and I was lean. I, I was like beach lean, like decent mm-hmm. inspiration, but like way, 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 way oversized. I said, well, if I want to do this bodybuilding thing, I need to do the bodybuilding thing, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when I got bigger, but I stopped lifting heavy or, or I generally mm-hmm. stopped lifting heavy. I still yeah. bench heavy, but the rest was just for pump and whatever. Right. And not my biggest, but I was weaker than when I was natural, ironically. Mm-hmm. And I also reached my best condition, like level of body fat after I've stopped. Hmm. It was smaller, but I mean, anyway. And, and by the way, I'm not saying that I would have been that good without steroids because it definitely builds a muscle. And even though I did lose most of it, it, it still increased nuclear domain. So if you are able to reestablish a more natural physiology, then you will be able to build muscle a bit faster. Okay. Um, anyway, so I, I kind of had to stop in my case. I, I didn't want to at first, but it was really for health reason. Then I kind of yeah. had to go into it. So you were saying coming off for your personal experience, the hardest part was psychologically letting go of the like identity basically that you had created around this physique. Of course. I created a persona. Yeah. I think that most people, and we create personas, not not, not just one. Okay. Yeah. And obviously the less secure you are about yourself, the more personas you create. You will create a persona for every situation. That's actually why I stopped doing lots of in-person coaching because yeah. every time I was coaching someone, I had to create a new persona for each yeah. client. And yeah. that's freaking tiring. Yeah. Freaking tiring. Uh, so, yeah. But what actually helped me out because at first it was like super hard. I mean, I couldn't go on because uh, it was health issues. Okay. But I was, was super unhappy. It's as my professional career improved that I actually got my, uh, my required, my required, uh, not glory, but respect and admiration from somewhere else than my appearance. Yeah. So I would say one thing is that you really need to find things that make you feel good about yourself, that you are realizing your full potential, do something mm-hmm. you're good at and contribute something to society. Mm. Are you sure you're not a one B? Are you like part one B, part two A? You're so you're so I'm, neurodominant. I am one B when I'm on the podcast because of adrenaline. But like I'm, you're so neurodominant with your strength. Yeah. It's just, well, you're just sometimes. I mean, again, <laughs> I'm better now. I, I think that the fact that my body is just healthier now that makes a huge difference. Mm. Uh, because I might have artificially like hurt my body a lot in the past. <laughs> so that left me in a really bad spot. I mean, honestly, the years I was on, and I was never someone who was excessive with dosages or anything. In fact, I was like quite conservative by, especially by modern standards, uh, is the time of my life where I was the most unhappy mm. and I was the most selfish. Mm. And I didn't do anything socially uh, mm-hmm. I was extremely boring, narcissistic. And again, that's not everybody. I mean, that's mm-hmm. me. That's mm-hmm. what I became. 
but it's common. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say like that. You're not the only one. I'll put it that way, that it pushes you into that neurochemical state combined with unhealed stories about the body. And this is my value and people won't like me unless I'm this guy. And like, it's common. It's really common for men. And the last thing I was wondering is, um, myths, you know, like, are there certain things you hear about steroids that are just like, oh my gosh, face palm? What do you mean? Do you have some in mind? Like, uh, just common beliefs that people have around it, like what it does and doesn't do, or, you know, well, it come won't mind? make your penis shrink. And that's <laughs> the one. It, will, it will make your balls shrink. It will. Yes. <laughs> Actually, a pretty good telltale sign. <laughs> okay question on this one testosterone super high levels of trt mm. now what do you have any thoughts on that because like i'm i don't know about you i'm not against testosterone replacement therapy when needed but you know how guys will use like astronomical yeah. amounts again, of it do you have any thoughts on that yes, absolutely well to me true trt like trt that brings someone with low testosterone level to the normal or high normal range that's perfectly acceptable Right. It's just optimizing your totally body. just like so women's so how women do that. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, the problem to me, and again, it's your body. You can do whatever you want, yeah. okay? <laughs> but, but, but let's call a cat, a cat. If you're using, let's say 300 milligrams of testosterone a week and say, like, that's TRT. I'm sorry. It's not TRT. Okay. Uh, TRT mm-hmm. would be something like maybe one to two milligram per kilo of body weight per week, roughly. Mm-hmm. Or about that would bring most people in the high normal range. So taking 300 grams of, of testosterone is a mild cycle. It's not high, but it's a cycle. So to me... And, hmm? and that will like really boost the dopamine. What's the neurotransmitter impact of that? Well, going actually, that high. at that level, it wouldn't, wouldn't change you probably. It would make you a bit more confident, a bit yeah. more assertive, uh, less depressive. Uh, I, I don't see it like 300 milligrams, 200 milligrams. I don't see that affecting behavior in a negative way. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it might affect prostate. It might affect lipid profile. So that, that's yeah. definitely something that, that can happen. Yeah. Way. I definitely think that lipid profile concerns as well. And yeah, it's crazy. Sometimes I'll have guys come to me that are on these astronomically high levels of TRT. It's higher. It's, you know, it's over 1500 and they, they haven't looked at their vitamin. I mean, they tested, but they didn't tell them anything about their super low vitamin D. You know, they no, there's no talk about minerals, making sure they have adequate zinc or any of that. It's just like, well, let's just medicate you, you know, again, I want to start a new topic here. They don't do cardio. They don't do cardio. And it sounds stupid, okay? Mm. I'm not a big cardio guy. But (laughs) if you're on steroids, do cardio. Mm. Steady state cardio. Don't like tell yourself to be a marathon runner. Mm. But certainly, that's one of the best ways to improve your lipid profile. I mean, mean, I'm not telling you not to train. I mean, you should train. But doing some form of energy system is work. Yeah. will go a long way. To help your lipid profile. Reducing the risk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My lipid profile. I like that. Okay. Last thing, last thing. So with the, the, the liver thinking, liver King thing coming mm-hmm. out and uh, you know, it's funny for probably you and me, it's like, wait, like you guys actually thought he wasn't on steroids. Like, wait, did anyone, I just assume no one believe, you know, I was kind of shocked when I saw that come out. Why do guys lie about it? Is it just the, an ego thing? Are they embarrassed that they're using it? Like, what is it? Why lie? Yeah, it's, it's probably that. I mean, people want to be recognized for being hard workers. Obviously, in this yeah. specific case, it, there's a huge marketing thing behind it because yeah. he's making money sending supplements, which are actually pretty good. That That's the bad thing. I These know. They're actually good. Yes. I mean, they are decently good. So he didn't, I mean, if he was only like an entertainer, that would be fine. But he's trying to sell you supplements, which are actually good, but it's still using right. a lie. To yeah. sell a product, I, I don't because this product will not help you get bigger, but it can help you be healthier. Okay? Yes, yeah. but that's not a big selling point with the crowd he's targeting, with which are the young yeah. people, right? Yeah. Uh, 
one thing that again, I, I find it stupid to think that people thought it was natural. One thing that, and it probably flew over his head, he actually had a video. He actually visited a primal tribe like the Maasai mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in Africa. The Maasai are actually eating and living like he claims you should be living. And it's mm -hmm. funny because he's, he's dancing around with these guys and nobody looks like him. <laughs> in real life, you know that's not the ancestral living that made me look like that i mean everybody here has been living that way their whole life and they don't look anywhere like me right yeah <laughs> weird and also uh one thing i didn't like i mean with his apology uh two things first uh it didn't make a real apology well he made an apology but he said, well, I, I just started using right now because I was low self-esteem, stuff like that. I said, Dude, you don't build a physique like that by using, you're like over 40 in just a year of using steroids or growth hormone, right? It takes a lot more time than that. Mm -hmm. And even uh, he showed a picture when he was younger, which showed symptoms of someone who might use something mild like Dynable. Uh, so definitely, I mean, and that's a strategy when someone gets caught. And yeah. that's, you cannot refute the evidence right. is admit to the least amount you can yeah. just to appear honest okay, and hide everything else. Why would I lie about previous use? I mean, I just told you I was using. okay. Uh, and also he tried to, now he's trying to use the uh, angle of he has low self-esteem and he's doing this to help people with low self-esteem issue. Yeah, lying to them about what is achievable with your product will really help their self-esteem, okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree that he, there's low self-esteem mixed in there because when you completely abandon yourself like that and mm. lie to that level, there's some low self-esteem yes. going on. And I honestly have compassion on it. And I, I think he's a great symbol for a lot of what's going on with steroid usage. Mm. It's I have to be this guy to be successful, to be lovable, yeah. to be wanted, right. you know? And like, I honestly have compassion on it. And I am grateful that it brought up this topic. Um, last thing, The Rock, yeah. is he on steroids? <laughs> what kind of question is that i, know. I put in my instagram story today and people were like tell us rock are you i'm like guys you, you i'd like to say no you. because i like him so much right i love him i love him but yes he's definitely <laughs> he's, he's honestly an amazing person <laughs> yeah i think i, I think he is right uh, I think he's he extraordinarily like gifted in pretty much yeah. everything he does <laughs> uh, he obviously has extremely good muscle building genetics yeah but when you look at what he looked like when he played college football, yeah. when he wrestled, okay? And back then, when he was playing college football, he was freakingly strong, okay? Yeah. When he was a wrestler, he was also a hard trainer, and, and it showed he was muscular, but he was more Samoan muscular. Yeah. Like, like just a big dude, right? Yeah. And he had gynecomastia, which is a common with steroid use, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, like at 45 and more, Mm -hmm. He is making dramatic improvement from a physique that was already extremely massive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, after 45, when you've been, and he's been training since he was like 12. Yeah. You don't suddenly make gains after 30 years of hardcore training. Right. Even though you are the hardest worker in the room. Yes, he is. A, he is. He does work hard. Yeah, you know, absolutely. definitely give him that. But yes, it's kind of. I feel good genetics. I mean, it's like liver cake. Right? He was. I remember at one point when he was still claiming to be natural. He said, "I'm like this because I'm training 14 times a week and I've been doing that for years." Yeah, but to me, that's actually proof that you are taking steroids because nobody yeah. can train 14 times a day a week hard. Okay, right, and, and not die okay oh, yeah or go catabolic from Absolutely. overtraining exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right christian thank you so much for coming on you always have the most amazing information anything going on in your world that you want to announce uh not really i mean i'm boring that way that uh, i'm working yeah. on a few new projects uh like i have a new online course coming up on on the um, barbell lift a barbell course so i'm doing that with uh my head coach tom shepherd he's going to do the powerlifting uh section nice. uh and he's we can also do it with uh Naomi shepherd his wife who has the world record on squat oh wow um, i'm doing the olympic lifting uh section 
which wow. covers both Olympic lifting for those who don't want to be a lifter, you just just to lift, and those who want to compete in weightlifting. Uh, oh, I have cool. Mullen Dovan, who's uh, from Rehab U, who's doing like the, all the warm up stuff, and uh, and we are talking with Dave Tate to see if he would do like a section on the uh, impact of all kind of different specialty bars. Very so that's cool. the one thing we're working on. Oh, very cool. And then guys, make sure we'll link up the website and everything, but Christian who is who I got my neurotyping certification from, and we had an episode about that before. Oh, I'm, I- I'm going to be updating the system. That's one thing I need to mention. Mm, okay. uh, I'm actually having a call tomorrow with a good friend of mine who's a very extreme, he's a naturopathic doctor, mm. extraordinarily, extraordinarily knowledgeable on hormones and neurotransmitters. Like, like literally, like I, I don't have like, Insecurities facing most people, but <laughs> really puts me to shame. I'm going to completely update the system. Wow. Okay. Are you going to do like a revamp certification wow. on it? Yes. Oh, wow. And those awesome. who already have it probably will have it at a very, very, very high discount. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. And then of course, if you're not like a, you know, trainer or in health, you can also take the test and, and use your digital programs, which are amazing. So I'll link all that up. Um, and yeah, we'll put links to the certification too. So people can kind of track that, but Christian, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Have a great day.